Corner, we legit have the legend, the Georgie Town Warrior, York Morgan. Die. Extra noses, pants on you. Ooh, you're so warm. Looks like you're just a little too slow, Squishy. You're too slow! Well, that was your priority. And look where it got you. Second.
will pee in your bed. Meow. I pee pee in bed. Ha ha. Meow. Rico, you literally messaged me like the minute I hit the live button. to watch one of my videos and make sure it was good before I started. That's why I started late. And of course I exercised. You know, I gotta prioritize my health. artist strange I've known you for two years and you're still a new artist not a fisting artist or a punching artist a new artist I keep it fresh funny enough Georgie did all the clips last night he did not make one clip about the artist jokes Fucking LA, god damn it. I should get it by Thursday. That's the estimated delivery date. Ooh, that's perfect. You know, artists, we should organize a vote for all the all the scary games I should play. Make a make a big like tournament bracket that everyone can vote for on scary games and I'll play through like the three that win look it's Rico's favorite person um well uh three of Rico's favorite people are on screen right now it's me artist and Georgie so which one which one is it Just joking, we all know it's this guy! Hey! They were on screen, you just weren't looking at the screen. It's me. Hello, everybody. I'm Dylan with a Rico's favorite person. And, uh, Rico spends all of his time with me because I'm the best. Obviously. It's just, it's the only answer there is. It's that I'm the best. Hi, Blanket Rico. Hi, Canadian Dylan. Yeah, it ignores Birdo. Well, the only way you'll ever get his attention is by being in my Twitch chat. And bails on all of his plans with him. Ooh. I don't know if I should be flattered. He has enough professional and interpersonal respect of me that he held back from sexualizing. Or if I should be offended that he doesn't think my fishing isn't hot enough to highlight. Definitely. You definitely should be offended. Because Georgie has no morals or values. So, it's definitely not a professional professional or interpersonal respect of you. Like, because he doesn't have that. He holds no respect towards anything or anybody. Everything's just everything's just a fuckable thing to him. It, it's funny, I have the duality of man in my chat. So we have Georgie on one end who will fuck anything and everything and sexualize everything. And then we have Artist who just fence sits. <laughs> what the fuck, Georgie? He's not even here. He's at the store right now. 
A new artist, the asexual master. I need to, I need to train under him. Yeah, so... I don't know if you guys were here for it last night. Played Yakuza 0, and, uh... <laughs> we'll see if he makes that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I played Yakuza 0. It was a lot of fun. That game was a lot of fun. But now I've, I've, uh, I've put myself in the precarious position of having to play Yakuza 0 and finish Ace Attorney. And Ace Attorney's gonna take the rest of the goddamn year to finish. What do you mean you're late? You're here. You were the, you were you were the second person here. That's like I mean I guess that was pretty late. Being the second person in chat today is pretty unforfucking giveable. Didn't have to make a clip of it. This is my way to DM him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just messing with you. Uh, yeah, man. I I because the game's pretty fucking fun. I didn't think that fighting would be as fun as it is. I'm here. <laughs> now he's here. Can't wait for you to get the side quest content. You're gonna have a blast. I'm gonna spend so much fucking time playing Yakuza Zero. It's gonna be like my. It's gonna be my every weekend game probably. <sighs> Georgie, just because you got first doesn't mean you're here. You can easily click first and then go to the store. I know how you are. I know how you are, Georgie. Georgie's like, ah, ah. I can't dodge all these stray bullets coming my way. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to take the load to the face. It's the only game I've ever enjoyed the goofy little side quests on. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to be playing that. I'm still finishing up some videos. I got two videos done. I got one more to do. I don't know how long that's going to fucking take. It should be all right. I feel like it's it's not that long. I just need to. I'll probably, I'll probably finish it on Wednesday. And then Friday, I'll release one of the videos so you guys can see it. Everyone who's here, though, has already seen the entire journey of what the videos are about. But I guess you can see them in their condensed form. Then you can tell all your friends about it, you know? Except artists, because artists never tells his friends about what I do. See, artist has this crippling fear of making me famous. Because when I'm famous, and I'm making tons of money, I'm gonna forget about all you little people. And that's a fact. You can, you can clip that. I'll forget about every single one of you guys. Also, most Yakuza games, if you only do story, are like 15 to 25 hours long. Really? Okay, that's not so bad. I guess it's the side content that makes the game really, really long. So, Ace Attorney 3. It's been a minute. Been a minute since I played it. And, uh, we're on Episode 4. The very beginning of Episode 4 for uh, Ace Attorney 3. Just... And I think there's, there's one more, right? There's five episodes? Where there's six. This game is long as fuck. It does, but it's so fucking fun you'll probably want to do it. But even then, most are 30 to 40 hours even with that. Okay. Five. Yeah, so... <laughs> is the... Is that... Maybe episode... Maybe episode four is not as long as the other ones were, but... The ones I've played have been fucking long. This game, as much as I enjoy it, it is very fucking draining. It is super draining. I, I, I don't feel the, uh, the exhaustion, or the exhaustion I feel for this game, I never had with the first Ace Attorney, and the second one, I only had it once. I feel like after every episode, I'm exhausted from the episode I just did. I'm just like, oh shit, I need a break, and then I don't play it for like a week or two. Yakuza yeah, is the only series I can think of that makes real estate development exciting. Well, what about, uh, the house cleaning thing? You'll probably find it worth it by the end, but it is long. Yeah, it's just, I get, I, I like, I'm a guy who likes to, um, I think the game wants me to space it out, so every time it gets to, like, save, when it says, when it gives me the prompt to save, I think the game wants me to stop there and pick it back up later. But when I do that, it punishes me when I get into the trial and I forget some, like, tiny piece of evidence, because I played it a week ago, and then I'm like, ah, oh, I forgot all about that. So it feels like it wants you to take breaks, but it also wants you to remember every single thing all the time. And that's been more prevalent in this one. So far, I like, I think I liked, uh, I liked, I liked two better than this one so far. Still. Two had way better pacing. Wow. 
why I used guides, because after a certain point, I just wanted to do the story. I gotcha. I didn't take too many breaks. It's also hard, like, I wouldn't take breaks if I was just, like, if I was just reading. I'm a really, I'm a really fast reader. Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I can, I can speed read. Uh, so I can, I can read pretty fast. But I gotta stop and read everything out loud. And it makes it take so fucking long when I have to read every single thing. It takes a lot. And it, it, it exhausts me. Sometimes I get too into it. And I, I fucking dump a voice. Where I'm just like, hey, what you fucking news? And I read like that for 30 minutes. And then like the next three days, I have a sore throat and I can barely talk. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, get, I get way too into it. That's, that's my problem. I hope you guys appreciate it though. I hope you guys appreciate me putting my fucking, my health on the line to entertain you. Even though when I get famous, I'll never remember any of you. And when I see you guys, when I have a million people in my chat talking, you guys will just be these little blips that I always miss on purpose. It, I do, it's very fun and entertaining. I appreciate your damaged vocal cords. <laughs> well, Rico, you damage my vocal cords in other ways. Anyway. Maybe... <laughs> At, at, at some point today, me and Rico are supposed to talk. Maybe. I don't know. Me and him always get so busy we can't talk to each other. And we'll see if uh, tomorrow we'll do the uh, Fire Emblem stream or if it'll just be on Thursday. But well, we'll see. Anyway. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> the girl. Let her go. Is this an old movie? Oh shit, it's Yakuza! Shut up! Come closer, and I kill her! Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Damn! me up at night watching porn. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive Data. Pikachu. Data 1. Terry Fowles. Charge kidnapping, murder. Sentence, death penalty. Fugitive Movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broke out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Six years earlier, Mia Fey, first trial. Um, I tried. I I couldn't find a uh, thing to swap to English. I couldn't. There wasn't one. There was a there was subtitle options. There was no uh, there was no uh, dub option. February sixteenth, nine twenty four a.m. District lobby defendant lobby number or district court defendant lobby number four thousand five hundred and sixty three two hundred and forty five. There's a lot of fucking criminals here. Ugh, I'm so nervous. Little on the service. I am calm and ready. To drop bombs, but he keeps on spaghetti. What he wrote down, spaghetti. I never should have accepted this case. <laughs> they make him carry the ball. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Why is he gonna carry the fucking ball? Ah, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. <laughs> I ain't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Terry Fowles. My first client. Sentenced to death five years ago and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk, try to relax him. Er, um, so why did you escape anyway? Um, hug, uh, eek, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill anybody. I never, never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Uh, 
but Mr. Fowles, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ah? Uh? Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed anybody. Uh, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, oh god. <laughs> I I'm really, really sorry. They sent me to die five years ago, but I was tricked to tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. Is this, uh, this is that dude from Demon Slayer, right? The one who cries all the time? Don't they, doesn't he got the same, like, face scars? This is him, is this him, like, before? Before he became a Demon Slayer? I swear, I didn't kill her. I could never do it. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a police woman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police be believe that Terry Fowles did it. Is it Terry Falls or Terry Fowles? Terry, F I Terry Falls, Terry Fowles. I gotta, I gotta figure out what the pun is to be able to know how to say it right. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a police woman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should? Ha. Huh. Is that Goto? Bro, is that Goto? Goto all the homo? This is, this is flaming. This is red hot. Flaming yon. I would schlob on his knob like it was corn on the cob. You're not gonna figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. Y your Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. <laughs> Goto has white hair. Oh, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Maybe he didn't dye it six years ago. Uh, where's Mr. Grossberg? Ha! That old man's probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Armando? Aren't not good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. Definitely not Godo. I, I didn't say... So Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me? No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Whoa! Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, er, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha, relax, I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. R really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. G genius Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. What? A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Did I pick a good voice? <laughs> no, please, I didn't do it! <laughs> February 16th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Fowles. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Damn! Oh my god! He looks so fucking young and hot! Look at that jawline! Look at that short hair! What a fucking sexual icon he is! I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Y yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, edging, ever-present. Mm. 
So you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, hey? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Come on, Mia. You can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Ugh. How dare they be a younger age. Bitch, I will fucking kill you for being younger than me. Young people running a trial. Not sh too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escape in prison. On the day the defendant escaped, the policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor, it was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. Damn. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted, much like my asshole. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was... A certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony? The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That policewoman you just mentioned, that wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha! I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind. To take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now! Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious the defendant's guilty, so I claim he's guilty. He's guilty, motherfucker. Throw him away. Objection! You can't just do that! At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. <clears throat> but I've got milkies to get! Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice, or your tone of voice, or the fact you're a woman. That's sexist, Judge. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why, you... You're even younger than me, you hypocrite! <laughs> now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Oh, no! Oh, we're fucked! Oh, no! How could things have gone so fucking wrong?! Witness, state your name and occupation. It's Gumshoe! Dick Gumshoe! I'm the homo detective in charge of the case! A homicide detective in charge of the case, sir! I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago! I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am! You got any idea how much work it takes? Wh what What is it? You. You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? <laughs> no, seriously. My hat. It's aching for you. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Is it my balls? I okay, okay, I get it. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yeah, sure. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hathorne. 
A veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, yeah, sure. I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. I see, I see. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Hmm, I see. Dusky Bridge map added to the court record. Bridge located 40 feet above the Eagle River. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? Your victim, Sergeant Valerie Hathorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. So she got stabbed in the back, but the blood, the coat still... What the... F that doesn't make any sense, dude. There's a hole. There's a hole where she got stabbed. She became a donut. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. Hey, fuck it, that's why I'm a judge, because I hate listening to people fucking talk. Good choice in fucking career, huh? If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? His fucking eyes like that are scary. Daunting. Terrified. Look at that. Look at that face. It's, 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 it, it, it's a thing of horror. Now, I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I was some hoser. Oh, he's Canadian. Oh my god, this just gets worse. <laughs> Detective, proceed with your testimony, eh? Um, yeah, sure. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay now, listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get- <laughs> He's drinking tea. <laughs> Beck, long time ago I used to drink tea, but now I'm a coffee man. Life changes. Life changes a motherfucker. <laughs> On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at the police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Hmm. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge, eh? I can't- I don't think I really believe this guy's Canadian. I don't think he said sorry once. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination coming- coming right up! Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I, 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 I'm not trembling, it's, 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 it's just cold in here. Someone must have used an ice beam. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right, especially for a beginner. I, I don't need you to worry about me. I, I mean, I mean the defendant, the witness, everyone is a beginner in here. Ha! Huh. You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them just what you got, kitten. I feel like that's a little that's a little sexual. Him calling her kitten like that. I don't know. I don't like this guy. He's giving me he's giving me a troublesome vibe. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember, those court procedure videos you stayed up all last night watching. This bitch YouTubed how to be a fucking lawyer. Okay, maybe she does need the claws out. <laughs> she's watching YouTube all night. Okay, how do I do- how do- how to be a lawyer? And she just watched like a part 10 series. Okay, let's uh, let's drop a fat- fat save. What? 
Okay, autopsy report, the bridge. Okay, cool. What, uh, what profiles do we have? A hotshot lawyer, my senior and rival at the office. A bit smug. I mean, he's even got the smug face. Dubbed a genius as soon as he started as a prosecutor. Today's his court debut. Damn, a fucking, a, a, a thick 26. He's 26 years old. This guy's 25, man. These guys are all young. Oh, it hurts. They're all younger than me, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. This unknown person, you have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hathorn was the defendant, Terry Fowles. Uh, wh wh what? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hathorn was a very thorough person, Chef. She left a note about a phone call with Mr. Fowles. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo that she left in a desk. Hmm. According to this note, seems it seems the one who called her at the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Uh, whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Ah, huh. looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it was that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Ooh. Well, hello. Even Mia's on the fucking bandwagon here. Everyone wants to fuck. Who doesn't want to fuck Edgeworth? Uh, Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. A bridge up in the mountains, but why meet there? Because it's a very important place to the defendant, Edgewine. What do you mean by that? If you remember five years ago, the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. And the place where all of this occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Fowles. Ha! Huh. Returning to the scene of the crime. How oh, nostalgic. Was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah! We were really on the ball! We found a criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, Don't move! We've got you surrounded! Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. How did they find out about the crime so quickly? Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned on the phone call to someone else, right? Ha! Huh. If that's what had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned a phone call from Mr. Falls, but... She left a note on her desk about it. If only I'd noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Car thieves. I'm not sure how to feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. That's a wo- there's a woman! There's a woman in the trunk! Isn't that normal? I could have sworn that was a normal thing. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that! That doesn't look too comfortable. <laughs> That looks outright very uncomfortable and dangerous. Why would she be in the trunk like that? The victim. She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha. Huh. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here? You can't tell from this photo, but 
The knife was stuck in her back, nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Do you? Anyway, is it that the lock is broken? Because the lock looks pretty fucking broken to me. How would it have stayed shut if it was broken? I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep pressing, though. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What do you always say, ma'am? It's only Shinge. Nothing. I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a fucking car. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says... Huh? Sorry. I told a little lie. Or something like that. Well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can... I mean, the lock's broken. Objection. Okay, I guess I guess I can't do anything yet. This falls is arrested at a police checkpoint. We set at the base of the camp. Okay. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually, it was way too close for comfort. We shut up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Falls might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A t trap? Walk into it carelessly and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you better get some more information. And if you're gonna get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. mechanics so I'll trust you that a woman should be there oh yeah uh, I've never worked I've never worked on a car that there wasn't uh, some type of woman in the in the trunk I don't know really really strange that uh, they're making a big deal about it in this case it was a 15 year old who needed an adult in the car but didn't have enough for her in the actual car <laughs> okay um so what does this say? Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Dahlia? Isn't that the- isn't that her mom? Isn't her mom Dahlia Faye? Am I wrong? I- that name sounds so familiar. Aside from Ash's mom. Okay, I know Ash's mom. Or her name's Delia. I mean, it's just that the lock is broken. How do I, how do I, how do I use that? Can I use it? Criminal stuffed her body in his car trunk. Here's a photo of the, the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. Do you? Anyway. Profiles. I'm pretty hard locked on 
the fact that the trunk is broken. I don't know how it ties into it, but it's broken. There's no way this thing would be able to latch shut with it broken like that. Or is that a is that a bullet hole? Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss between four and five. Bridge located 40 feet above Eagle River. Confidential police materials written by the victim. February 14th falls, uh, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Okay, hold on. So who was supposed to wear the white scarf? Her? Is she wearing the white scarf? I, mean, I guess she's not. Murdered. We're stuck for body. Here's a photo. I don't see anything strange. Mr. Falls is arrested at a police checkpoint. Based on the mountain. So, I mean, do I have to? Do I just. Ah. Uh. Objection! Is it the scar? Shit. Witness! These nuts! What? What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I I'm sorry. I, I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is this is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. Uh, you should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Huh? Hey there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. How old- how old is she? How old is she? What? <sighs> Come on, Mia. Shake it off. You're a lawyer! Detective! Y yes ma'am! This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's- that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. In a, in a note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. I oh, got it. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus this special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. That's black and white. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! The caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what have you to say about this? Ah, <sighs> I see the defense is a little lacking. I don't know, man. She looks like she's packing to me. The scarf you are searching so desperately for. Is it this one, perchance? That's blue. You fucking idiot. You absolute fucking idiot. That's blue, okay? I'm not about to have this blue gold scarf debate in my chat today. It's blue, okay? Ah! Uh. Where'd you find that shit? On Dusky Bridge? I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. Why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel, which is perfectly legal. <laughs> It's the safest place I know. Huh. That hot, that hot shot sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white as the caller requested, but as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. <clears throat> Looks like it spent some time in the mud. Not surprising, it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth, he was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Now, if the attorney for the defense is finished, is finished, is finished, embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Fay? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. <laughs> oh my god. He's, he's probably into that, Mia. Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business... 
The prosecution moves to establish conclusively and with hard, throbbing evidence that Miss Hawthorne and Miss Falls, Mr. Falls, did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, everything's moving in his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Because his daddy died in front of him. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the, in when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing the scarf shirt. Please do not tell me that bitch. Please do not tell me that bitch is about to show up with her fucking camera. I swear to fucking God, if she's the most recurring ca character in these fucking games, I'm gonna be so mad. They can literally do anybody. I I'll leave it. I'll it better be someone else. It was drizzling that day, unfortunately. It's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Hmm, looking at this photo... You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It is about a 40-foot drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. Aha! A potential witness! So why isn't this person in the courtroom? For the love of fucking Jesus, and everything sacred and holy, Please do not bring that fucking creature back in this courtroom. Can we just- can we just be done with her? Can she go? I- please don't- don't be who I think it is. Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, your honor. Oh no, it is her. Oh no. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel, compel them to testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Judge, stop. Stop. You don't know what you're doing. So as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again! That's not fair! I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean, hmm? <sighs> Actually, there's an eyewitness. Who is there? Who is this eyewitness? Please stop pressing the matter. Let's just, let's just focus on the photo itself. Actually, while we're here. What am I looking at? What am I looking at? It's a bridge. It's raining. A dude's got his ball in his hand, as usual. There she is with the scarf and the fucking, uh, her hat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very nice footwear choice. I think our boy's not wearing any shoes. Because I guess prisoners aren't aware, allowed to wear shoes. And, uh, she's wearing the fucking, the slip-ons. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nice. And it's raining. It's raining. She's a college student. A female college student. That's right. Meaning she's female and a college student, ma'am. <laughs> and I like both of those things. Actually, I like men. I just don't know it yet. She doesn't do well in front of other people, so I came to testify for her. Maybe so, but as the attorney for the defense, I have the right to cross-examine her. For the time being, we're not relying on the witness's statements. That's all. What is that supposed to mean? The prosecution has other more decisive evidence. Our case doesn't rest on the vague testimony of a female college student. A female college student, eh? It means she's female and a college student, eh? If you absolutely must hear her testimony, you'll have to give us a good reason why. Please tell us about the more decisive evidence in question. Scarf. The victim is wearing a scarf in that photo, all right. 
So about the witness who took this photo, what was this person doing all the way in the mountains? She was taking photos of the wildflowers, apparently. There are many unusual types of flora on that mountain, Miss Faye. People in the area say it's because of the spirits that live there. The spirits? Now that you mention it, this photo, this cloudy fog-like thing, is it a ghost? I don't believe it! No, Your Honor, no, I don't think it's a ghost. The one-time gumshoe is smarter than somebody, can you believe this? Unless it's actually a ghost, then gumshoe's still just stupid. It was drizzling, my initial. It was drizzle, my initial. Drizzling, huh? That's right. There was a light rain coming down. The whole place was dreary, but not as dreary as the mood that's in this courtroom right now. Heh <laughs> heh! Looks like a cold front just moved in. In any case... The point is that the area was quite damp. There was some fog, even. I even slipped and fell while I was on the bridge. It was really something. <laughs> Colonel shut the victim down from behind his stabber. <laughs> is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is! He pushed the victim hand in the back, and he, she fell down right on his stomach. Hmm. I remember that happening once myself. I was really brutal. What the fuck? I was brutal? What is he, a ham taro? Is he a hamster? Is he a, is he a ham- is that ham chat? Is he ham chatting to me right now? I thought I was done playing ham taro, but apparently we're just bringing it back. Are you talking about seeing someone get pushed, or were you the one getting pushed? Or does it mean that you pushed someone down like that once? With his mind-boggling tales and the way he said brutal, I wonder if he's Canadian. <laughs> it's true, Canadians make no fucking sense. Ha! Save your nasty look for the right person, namely a Canadian. Huh? I know a man named Rico. He's pretty fucking Canadian. Save that nasty look for him. Poor baby. Court record seems to have wet itself. Hey, watch where you spill your coffee. The court record, huh? That must have been when the scare fell. Off. So, in other words, there was a struggle between the criminal and the victim. That's what the witness said. Well, looks like she didn't remember about the scare. But from what she said, it sounded like a pretty violent fight, ma'am. The area was wet from rain. The bridge was probably wet too. Which would explain why the scarf was all covered in mud, but... There's something about this testimony that's still bothering me. Heh! <laughs> Talk about a surprise! I had no idea there was a photo. So, so what do I do? You really still believe him? Mr. Crybaby, I mean. Of course I do! Huh. So the little kitten believes in fairy tales, huh? In that case, the answer's obvious. If what you believe is the truth, and that means that somewhere hidden in that testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. That's your chance. One big, fat, sexy contra contradiction. One by the victim, the time the incident. Fridge, take a bite of wetness. Or a drunk mouse car, bridge located 40 feet. Confidential police material, die from blood loss. Now what am I looking at here? The hat's gone, the scarf's gone, where did it all go? Where's the hat? Where's that? The hat's missing, it's Rico. Rico did it. Rico killed her. He killed her and took the hat. And then he pinned it on that dude. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing a scarf. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. So, I mean, uh, how did he push her from behind? He was standing in front of her, right? But, I mean, that's like, you know, he could have just, she could have walked in front of him and then he pushed her down. I don't know. 
Let's see. Profiles. Since the death five years ago, escaped from custody two days ago. Victim, a key witness in the case against Falls five years ago. Talk to Dahlia, tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Damn it, that bridge with my skirt. Nation. So yeah, I mean, the way I see it is he couldn't have pushed her from behind. So I feel like that's where I need to go with it. But if it, if it didn't do anything there, it must have been when the scarf fell off. What does the scarf say? Warned by the victim at the time of the incident, it was found on the bridge. So is the bridge broken? Why is it broken there? There's a witness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows the victim wearing a scarf. So, this picture... I'm not sure I see anything fucky wucky with the picture. It was drizzling that day, and unfortunately it's a little hard to see what's going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind, stabbed him in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Ah, uh, what's the contradiction? Is it here? I think I think he said something here. Is that part of the witness's testimony as well? Of course it is. He pushed the victim hard on the back, and she fell down right on her stomach. I remember that happening once myself. Take a look. Poor baby, the court record seems to have read itself. So it's it's here, I think. Right here. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind. I feel like it's the fact that he was standing right fucking in front of her. There's no way he could have pushed her from behind. Addiction. Guess I'm about to just cycle through all the fucking evidence. I don't want to randomly guess. Stabbed with a knife in the back, died from blood loss. Bridge located 40 feet above the river. Confidential police materials written by the victim. So she wrote, February 14th, 121 p.m. Falls, 4.30 p.m. at that bridge. Wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. And a photo of the trunk. Not those two things. <sighs> Since the death five years ago, his officer and the victim, the key witness in the case against Falls. Yeah, I'm a, li I'm a little lost right now. I'm not really sure what it could be. I mean, there's not a lot. There's not a lot to present. It might not even be here. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not seeing it right now. I mean, the only thing I see is that how could he have pushed her down from behind if he was standing right the fuck in front of her? He, that means she would have had to willingly walk by him or turn away from him to be shoved down. But they were supposed to meet! Something taken by the witness. It shows the Vic wearing a scarf. 
I mean, I guess she could have fell because it was raining. I'm gonna surprise. I had no idea there was a photo. So what do I do? You really still believe him, Mr. Crybaby? Of course I do. That means that somewhere hidden in the testimony is a contradiction. One huge contradiction waiting to be discovered. I'm still fucking sold on the fact that there's... Th th about the pushing her over thing. Picture would have been taken from the opposite side. Objection! Is it the trunk? Is it? F so at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down. Correct? Dude, oh my god! Don't tell me it's because there's no rain in the picture of her in the trunk. Oh my gosh! It could have cleared up. It easily could have cleared up. Yeah, and fog too. Just a generally shaggy atmosphere. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. Well, by all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions of that day? I mean, I'm fucking, I'm heavy set on this fucking lock being broken, but I guess it could be the ground doesn't look wet? It's, I mean, the, the car itself doesn't look wet, right? There's no, like, you'd see moisture on the car. Take that! Take that! Naturally, the answer is right around here, I think. that she could hide all her okay whoo whoo man oh hot dog that was crazy <laughs> that was crazy edgeworth only went almost went a whole different direction <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> it's like this bitch yeah, she could honestly go fucking die <laughs> uh all right, I guess it. I guess it's got to be the ground. If it's not, there's no moisture on the car. <sighs> what am I? Okay. What, what am I? What am I exactly looking for? I mean, this is the uh, scene of the crime. Something isn't right. I mean, there's th th there's a lot of things that could be not right. There's no fucking blood. Her hat's gone. The fucking lock's broken. There's no water on the outside of the car. The car would be the car would be uh have water in it. Coat? As far as I can see, there's nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Recall the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky bridge was all wet. 
if the victim really had fallen down on her stomach on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. That, that's exactly right! The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff beard was befouled. Objection! Playoff beard? His, hold on, can we, can we take a minute? Can we step back? Let's, let's, let's take a minute together, chat. And, and back it up. Does the, does the judge have a beard? Did he, like, win a playoff game and shave off a beard and, like, what? What does that mean? His playoff, what? Who is this man? Who let, who, how do you be a judge in these games? What does it take? An IQ of 12? I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day, much like me when I see Phoenix. Mm. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honor had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, your glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet, but not muddy. Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? Yes. The surface of the bridge, huh? Ha! A real man wouldn't stand for a taunt like this. It's, I mean, the fucking, if, it's the scarf. Neither would a real woman. Of course I can. Here's the evidence that proves the surface of the bridge was muddy. It's, it's this. The evidence is this scarf. Ah! It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means the bridge was obviously covered in mud. Ah, oh, shit! Oh, I, 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 no, I can't be outwitted by uh, this novice bimbo! Hey, same to you, buddy. <laughs> we call her a bimbo. Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. I do admit that there appears to be a contradiction between uh, the condition of the coat and the scarf. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? Uh, all right. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. Ha! Huh. You're doing pretty well for a little kitten. Mr. Armando? No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness photo showing the defendant and the victim, it's, or the witness's testimony that stated she saw the moment of the murder. It's, it's the trunk. Gotta be the trunk. Maybe, I don't know. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. What you said just now, I'm not sure I like that. That, that wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over there. He said it. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. At least not yet, motherfucker. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as the flimsy scam it really is. Yes. The false evidence in the case is the... Um, hold on a second. I guess let's let's look it over. Let's look it over together, shall we, friends? So, uh, the false evidence is either the witness testimony, the body in the trunk, or the witness's photo. So, uh, wait, what is the witness testimony? So here's the photo. I don't think this is false. There's no way this is false. I don't. I don't believe it. Um, I forget what, uh, the testimony is. And here's the car. The, or the, the, the trunk. It was obviously broke. The trunk was broken into. That, that fits somewhere. That fits into something somewhere. And I just, I just don't remember what the testimony is. I already forgot. See, like, I didn't even have to put down the game for two weeks. I already forgot. It's the body in the trunk. Whatever. If the victim really did try to repel her killer, and if she did fall down on the bridge, then you would expect her coat to be dirty. Therefore, the body that was found in the trunk of the car 
it was okay. Well, hold on. Let's let's calm down. That's that that might that might actually be her. Let's see where this goes. What do you have to say to that, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, objection. Hmm? Not only a whisper, but a mixed sigh, too. Valerie Hawthorne was more than a simple meter maid. She was a sergeant. There's absolutely no chance that a mistake about her identity could be made. I guess he's right. I'm so fixated on that lock being broken, damn it. From this point on, Miss Faye, I will penalize you for every unsubstantiated accusations. Uh, don't do it, Mia. Don't cry until you get home. Me. Me every day. Don't cry. Don't cry until the stream's over. This court is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him, Your Honor. Okay, we're just, we're just, we're looping. Maybe this will tell me what the testimony It's a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. Okay, that's what it was. That testimony is filled with holes, much like me. I have many holes in my body. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Mm, yes, that's true. I also have many holes in my body. Ha, huh, I have holes in my body too. I put coffee into every single one of them. If there was truly decisive witness in this case, I'm certain that boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. Your Honor, the defense requests to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony- oh no. Can we just- can we just fail this one? Can we just skip this one and go to episode 5? I don't- I don't want to go any further. Alright. Thanks for- thanks for coming out, guys. It was- it was a fun stream. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did, but apparently the Ace Attorney 3 game just ends right here. Abruptly. And just without cause. It's crazy how it just ends. Crazy. Ooh. It's over. That's it, guys. Yeah, they- I'll see you guys- I'll see you guys next time. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, it appears that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. <sighs> I'm bracing, Edgeworth. I'm bracing. I'm bracing so fucking hard right now. I've never braced this hard in my fucking life. Oh, the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well, please bring forth your witness at this time. I just, I just don't know if I want to. Do I even want to play this game anymore? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Maybe I can just play through Ace Attorney 2 again. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Now, let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons... The Blue-Eyes White Dragon in attack mode! Ha 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 ha! And then I activate my pot of greed! The woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. Witness, what is your name and occupation? <gasps> oh my god! Wait a minute! What? Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pitter-patter. There's no way! Oh my god, it's not her! <laughs> when I look at you, how can I put it? look as scrumptious as a double-double in a dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to drink bagged milk. Hey, hey, it became a dragon to the owner. <laughs> hey, hey, not so fast. <sighs> as I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to please exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman.
Miss Fay, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one of me. Um, sir? Hmm? Uh, yes, my dear. What was the voice I gave her? Oh, jeez. She's, she's such a- she's such a fucking player, dude. This is my first time, so I'm sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Mm, not at all! It's no trouble at all! My boner is raging! Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is, um, Melissa Foster. I'm a college student, a freshman in the literature department. You were on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo, is that accurate? How? How can you be so mean? Now see here, what are you doing shoving that in her face like that? I'm the only one who gets to shove thing in people's faces. Huh? But, but it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. Next time I'll be forced to penalize you. Uh-oh. I don't like the turn this has taken. Is she staring at me? Um... And you would be... Uh, huh. I, I'm the defense attorney. My name's Mia Fey. I see. So you are. Now then, young lady. Could you please give us your testimony? Yes, your honor. <coughs> I'll do my best. The butterflies came back. <laughs> she's, got a, she's got a persona. The witness's photograph. I, I was using my camera to take some pictures of wild flowers. Then, I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly, they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. And right after that, I called the police. Interesting. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. Um, I was standing right over here. I was standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. That makes sense. You took the photo from that location. I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. It looks just like Georgie's camera. Ho ho ho, what a cute camera! Just like its owner. Melissa Foster took the witness's photo with this, a small but powerful model. All right then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. He throws it, he throws it in her face. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wild flowers. Did you say wild flowers? Yes, the mountain is famous for its beautiful spring wild flowers. Um, but it's only February. Well, I I couldn't wait for spring to come. Oh, -ho, I know just how you feel. It's just like when I first started growing this glorious beard of mine. I just couldn't wait, so I wore a dyed blonde Santa beard until mine grew in properly. Would you mind if we got back to the facts of the case, Your Honor? And I noticed there were two people standing up at the suspension bridge. Was there anything strange about the two of them? I... I'm a bad girl. I know I am. It looked like they were having a real serious conversation up there. So I decided to watch them, like some kind of peeping Tom. No, not at all. Everyone's like that, honestly. I love watching other people fight, too. In fact, I can't get enough of it, so I'm a judge. <laughs> Called it. Too much info, Your Honor. In any case, it's perfectly natural for you to have to keep watching them. Especially dressed as they were. Well, anyway, I was watching them very closely. Suddenly they started Do you have any idea what they were fighting about? Uh, no. I have no idea. Why do you ask? Oh, I just thought that maybe you overheard what they said.
Uh oh. I would never, I would never eavesdrop. Oh, jeez. Thank God. I've got more class than that. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Ah. Oh, for Christ's sake. Why did you take a photo? Well, the two of them were really going at it. Ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a news reporter. I guess that part of me just kind of took over. It smells like a lie to me. Yes, I understand completely. Even now, I can't completely abandon my boyhood dreams. I still use my grandson to test my comedy routines on. So he wanted to be a comedian, huh? Not that it has any bearing on this. All I could do was use my camera. So I took the photo at the cru of a crucial moment and gave it to the police. What was so crucial about them fucking standing there? And right after that, I called the police. Oops. Hold it! Called the police. Yes, because it looked to me like the murderer was going to try to escape. We were already moving before the call even came in. But thanks to the victim's note, we had already started our operation. Hmm. That was certainly tough luck for the criminal. Hmm. Terry Falls isn't the criminal. And there must be something strange in that girl's testimony. Be careful, kitten. That girl has the judge wrapped right around her little finger. You're gonna have to have a tough time poke you're gonna have a tough time poking holes in that testimony of hers. You're going to have to come up with something really good, Mia. Using my camera to take pictures of wildflowers. And I noticed there were two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly I just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. So I feel like this is I mean, what's so crucial about this fucking moment? They're just fucking standing there. Objection! Witness, when you said you took a photo of the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Er... Uh, all I can see in this photo are two people standing. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Well, you see... The photo we presented was the only one there was. But if you really wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happened next? You must have taken a photo of it. Mm. Mm. Oh! Uh, um, my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. He can certainly downplay a situation, can't he? I, I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I'm just such a bad girl. I, um, I used it all up. The film, I mean. You ran out of film! Uh, this photo was the last one. What?! Unfortunately, that's the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that day. All the other photos were of the witness herself playing among the wild flowers. The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see, my camera has a timer feature built into it. Another timer feature, huh? Or, well, like, the other one was a sound feature. That's still weird. So you took photos of yourself? Uh, like, what? What kind of day? Uh, you took photos of your own self? I mean, who would ever think of doing such an ill-conceived thing? Oh my god! Next thing you're gonna tell me is they're gonna create social media where you take pictures and videos of yourself to show to the world! Like, what?! I remember taking some photos of myself once, too! Please, no details! Stop! It seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. W wait just a minute! Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. 
photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Very well then. Everyone in the in the court has to fuck Edgeworth. That's that's final. We have to do it now. That is my ruling. Everyone have sex with Edgeworth. Yes, Mr. Judge. Everyone in chat, we have to fuck Edgeworth. We don't have a choice. We all have to fuck Edgeworth. I'm sorry. I know we're really biting a bullet here by having to fuck one of the sexiest men alive. But uh, I will go first. I will. I, I offer myself as tribute. I will go first. Boy, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. Ha. Huh. It looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. Son's home. I was using my camera to fix pictures of wildflowers. Wait, did I already press all this? Okay. Yeah, I did. I can turn around. Okay, here we go. This is where we start. The victim? Why do you think she tried to run away? Um. With her police training, she certainly knew better than to turn her back on a criminal. Objection! This was a large, powerful man with a penis. If it had been a quaggy woman like you, I'm sure she would have acted differently. Quaggy? Why you? All right, let's take let's take just one minute. Let's uh let's do some research here. Quaggy is related to Quagmire. <laughs> Resembling a marsh or quagmire. Boggy. Yielding, soft, or flabby. <laughs> I think the real murder in this trial is the shit that fucking Edgeworth is saying to Mia. I think that's what we need to be having a trial about. Because uh, he's, he's gonna be... Con he's guilty. He's guilty of murdering Mia's character. If it had been me, I probably would have jumped into the river. There's still something wrong with this testimony. She only got about ten yards before she was stabbed in the back. So you're saying Sergeant Hawthorne wasn't able to get away from him? Well, it's a narrow bridge and it was swaying back and forth. If you ask me, both of them were in danger of falling off. I only wish I could have done something to help her. seems to make sense. I wonder about that. Something seems kind of off. Ah, does it now? You have a good sixth sense. When you feel that something's off, that's when you need to figure out why. Terry Foss isn't the criminal. It's this bitch. Be careful, kitten. She's a bitch. She's a crazy bitch, but she fucks so good I'm on top of it. Um, right at the end. Right here. Save. Present. Evidence. Fucking bridge map. There's no way she saw it. There's a fucking hill in the way. Stupid slut. Stupid squaggy ass slut. Witness, your testimony's a joke. And it's funnier than anything the judge has said all day. Huh? Wh what? But, but I just... Miss Faye, I thought I warned you to not make the witness cry. Bitch, all I do is make bitches cry. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's simple. Just take a look at the, the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then... She, she would have hit a dead end! You said ten yards, but she couldn't have ran even five. Because Dusky Bridge has collapsed on that side. Oh, wow! Okay, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't recognize that, but I will say that I'm, I'm just that, I'm just, I'm so smart, I'm ahead of myself. I'm like ten paces ahead of myself. I'm ten yards ahead of myself, so I, I you know. What does this all mean? It means she's a lying ass bitch. She's a hoe. That's all there is to it. <laughs> This beautiful, 
young lady has been lying to the court? Can people do such things? Such criminal things? Can you lie? Objection. Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth? Don't call him Mr. He's only 20. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. What? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying... I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair... <laughs> there's no evidence that can prove the bridge was broken during the incident. That's ridiculous! You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> ha! That guy is good. Huh? What do you mean? He's lying through his ass! He's a genius, alright. That diagram of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward! Well, Miss Faye, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. I I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Please, tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Running from the crime. It's the way that these bitches be. She's just running from the crime. Oh, God, get these accusations away from me. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Hmm. Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favorite cafe on the way home. Damn, dude, now I want coffee. Fuck you, Armando. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. Ha! That's what I like to hear. All right, Miss Faye, your cross-examination, if you please. The contradiction is, is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. Time to kill this bitch. Are you saying that the victim didn't fall down on the bridge? Uh, um, actually, maybe she did fall. Of course she didn't fall down on the bridge. If she had fallen down, this photo wouldn't make any sense. If that was the case, her coat would have been all muddy. If you don't mind, I was asking the witness. Ha! Huh, you can witness these nuts. Well, young lady? I'd love to witness those nuts. The man in the prison uniform grabbed her before she could. Ha! We're one step too slow. We're too slow! And then, what did the defendant do after that? You personally witnessed that? Yes? Did anything strange happen when he did that? Well, I, I don't know if you'd call it strange or not, but that's when the victim's scarf fell off. Hmm. You mean this scarf? Her words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problem. Because that was the only way he can make sure the body's safe. You mean the defendant carried the body all by himself? Y yes. Considering the size of the defendant, I don't think it would be 
difficult. Yes, but let's remember they were on a narrow bridge that was ready to collapse. Is it even possible for him to have carried a dead body on a bridge like that? Objection! Well, the fact of the matter is that he did. That kind of talk is just silly. Wow, why did he get so emotional all of a sudden? Miss Faye, if you think there's some other possibility, please share it with the rest of the class. Why did you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. God, dude, I fought- yeah, I, I know, I've been to that bridge, dude. I fought so many hikers on that bridge. I can't tell you how many Gravelers, Onyx, and Geodudes I've seen on that goddamn bridge. Like, they're everywhere. Every, I walk a feet, a one foot, it's like... <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a pretty niche joke. I, I apologize. A surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? There's also a small temple and a channeling dojo there. You know those monks. They just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. And you're absolutely certain that it was my client who was carrying the body. Well, he was wearing a prisoner's uniform, but as for his face... So you're saying you didn't get a clear look at his face? Well, they were far away and it was raining as well. I, I thought I was only supposed to see exactly what I saw. Excellent! You're a remarkably honest young woman. Something about this testimony is bothering me, but why? Hey, kid. Have you ever put salt in your coffee? Does cum count? Yeah, uh... No, why would I? Why not? Huh? It may actually go better with coffee than sugar, right? Listen, my point is if you're not sure, you might as well add a ton of salt to it. It might bring out the rust in something, like a piece of evidence. Right, Georgie? Some rust. Some delicious, yummy, crusty rust. He's right, Mia. Go present something. You've got nothing to lose. By the way, I wouldn't put salt in my coffee. Two don't go well after all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, give me give me one minute. I got I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, I still never fixed that fucking picture.
Sorry. I really gotta fix this BRB screen. I haven't even fixed the chat on this screen. I always forget to because I don't use it much. Yeah, sorry, I haven't... I haven't been paying too much attention to chat. Because I'm trying, just in case... Just in case, if you guys want to talk about everything, feel free. Um, I'm not, I'm not really reading it. I'm, I, like, when I get to breaks, I read it. I'm trying not to, like, get spoiled or, um... Have something like, you know... Even if, if someone speculates something... I don't want to read it and then automatically assume, like, you know, throw me off my own train of thought. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to have this be as, like, vanilla to myself as possible, so... Apologies if I miss, like, everything you guys are saying. Ugh. Have your in the back, he quickly picked her up in her arms, then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Okay. So this one, this one, uh, kind of jumps out to me. He carried her over to the car because she wouldn't have been able to see it because the hill was in the way. But she would have seen him pick her up on the other side of the bridge. But she wouldn't have seen him get to the car. There's no way she could have seen him get to the car. That's where I'm at. Press it again. Just to, just to re, re remind myself. You personally witnessed that? Yes. Did anything strange happen when he did that? Well, I don't know if you'd call it strange or not. But that's when the victim's scarf fell off. Hmm? You mean this scarf? Her words match what we found at the scene. I don't see any problem. Maybe I'm wrong. So I feel like I need to show the hill here and be like, there's no way she could have seen any of that. Or at least getting to the car. No, that's not it. Oh, car. I suppose that was the only way he can make sure the body stayed hidden. And just leave the body on top of the bridge. So. This bitch lying about something. It's already a broken down bridge in the way in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. Surprising number of people go up there. February and it was raining. There's also a small temple in Chilean Dojo. You know those monks, they just love cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found at any time. Besides, it is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. See, what I don't understand is, why did he go through the trouble to carry her, if that was the case? Like, he's on a bridge. He could have just thrown her off the fucking bridge, right?
I just, I don't know. Do I just, do I just present anything? Is that, is that the point he's going to? Just... Just present something? After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in her arm, in his arms, and he carried her over to the car. Was, that was the only way he made sure why he said hidden. He couldn't just go the bridge. I'm sorry, I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. I don't know if I'm just supposed to throw something? I mean, I guess I'll try. No, that's not the answer. located 40 feet above Eagle River. Trails, a photo of the trunk of the car, worn by the victim at the time of the incident, found on Dusty Bridge. Seems to be a camera. How does this all tie together? See, I don't know if I'm just supposed to throw a lie out and try to like catch her in a lie is that's what he means by the salt and coffee thing i think doesn't make any sense he could have just thrown her off the bridge i feel like throwing her off the bridge is like the easiest way to say it or the easiest way that that that, that could have been handled like disposing of the body why put it in the trunk why bother There's the map itself. by himself. Yes. Considering the size of the defendant, I don't think it would be difficult. Yes, but let's remember they were on a narrow bridge that was ready to collapse. It's impossible for him to carry his body. The fact that he did, that kind of talk is just silly. Okay, so this is the one he gets all emotional on, so I think that's... I feel like, based on that, this is where, this is where the issue lies. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. So what I think is that, like, what I was saying before, the hill blocks her view. There's no way she could know what he did with the body. Even if she saw him pick her up and walk away, she did not see what he did with the body afterwards. There's no way she could know, because that hill's just in the way, and there's no way she can get over it. Objection. A killer not wanting his victim to be found, I can understand that. However... The idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. Run her off the fucking bridge. Well, what is it? Take another look at this map of the area and you'll see how. The river. 
Just throw it in the fucking river. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about that river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is a well-known, well-known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Ah. In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at the same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. It's me. I'm every other killer. She caught me. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put that, Miss Fay, but I must admit it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Ooh! Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Huh. How sad. Perhaps Miss Fay would do well to try taking a dip in the river herself. He has zero fucking chill. He has zero goddamn chill. What is wrong with this man? He's, he's sexy, and he has a drive to just tell people that they should be fucking dead. What? What happened to this boy? I mean, I know he saw his dad die and all that, but god damn. Edgeworth, chill the fuck out, brother. It's not that deep. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. Miss Faye, it seems your assertion is without merit after all. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. I need to start. I need to start taking notes for myself on these shits. Objection! Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness has told us. Ugh. Please, witness, go on with your testimony. I I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Dude, Edgeworth is such a- he's such a shitty little bitch. Who is he talking about? All right, I'll do my best. I'll do my breasts. Accident. Car of killer broke in the trunk of a stolen car and hid the body in there. What the fuck already? Are you how? Bitch, bitch, you couldn't see that. There's no way you could have saw that. But it's true. He did break into the car because the lock was broken. I'm pressing that right now. Objection. Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. Done what? Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your own eyes? I yes, and? It's simple, Miss Foster. Take a look at the diagram. The place you claim to have taken the photo from that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car. This outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Huh? That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. Objection! I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock. However, it's so if it isn't if it isn't so tall, it would stop her from seeing the car. That's right! It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. 
I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the court, yes? This is the location the photo was taken from. Your own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge, but the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ah! Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff, but still you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. No! Order! Order in the court! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact the escapee fled in a stolen car was reported on the news. After witnessing a murder, I'm sure you could appreciate the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her own eyes. Hmm. Oh. Eh. Uh, Mr. Judge? W what is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Oh, here we go again. Hey, wait a minute. You can't just say that. Miss Faye. No one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm, yes, indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human. To forgive, divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here, just not to you. What? That's not fair! Ha! Huh. Save the tears for later, kitten. Mr. Armando? Don't look back until the trial's over. Now's the time to go forward. But, but... But that wasn't fair. Okay, kitten. You need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell me, how did she know that? How did she know that he broke into the trunk? Well, Miss Foster, until you can explain how you knew that, you're gonna have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Well, witness? Well, I I'm certain that he broke into the trunk. Because, because there were marks left on the trunk lid. I'm certain there were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. How did she know? It's true. These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. I knew it would be important. Mm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Fay, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? Sorry, bitch, but I'm out of money, so I can't afford it. It doesn't work. Melissa Foster, it looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers, but even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when. When did you get a chance to see those scratches? Finally, I've gotten her. Ha! I'm getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... Okay. Let's... let's... let me think about this. Okay. So the camera had a timer. It can take pictures by itself. That means that she didn't have to be there to take the picture of what was happening. I'll wait for the ad break to end. I mean, okay. I'm open to conjecture now. I'm reading chat. I'm reading chat. Um, she happened to be passing by. She put the corpse in herself. She's the owner of the car. I feel like all of these are viable. Um, I don't think she happened to be passing by. That's, that's out. There's no way she happened to be passing by. Um. It's either, it's either, 
It's either she put the corpse in herself or she's the owner of the car. The only reason I don't see her putting the corpse in herself is because she's a dainty little fragile girl. Um, so that's crazy. Uh, her being the owner of the car, I could see like if it was stolen and then she followed the car to that point. But I think she's in, in this a little more than she's suggesting. So what I think is, I think it, it falls on, by process of elimination, it has to be the, uh, she put the corpse in herself. Because if she's the owner of the car, it, or it could be the owner of the car too, because she could have like broke the lock herself and took that picture. Like it, trying to incriminate the other guy or something. But that's an official picture. So I don't see why the lock would be broken if it was, if it was her car. If she owned the car, then why not unlock the trunk? Exactly. But why didn't he unlock the trunk if he stole the car? All he would have had to do is hit the unlock button inside. So, it could it could be either of those. Uh, I can't be a conjecturer. Well, that's that's a little classist artist. It's suggesting that as the owner, she saw it after. I I think it's the corpse. I think I think it's that she put the corpse in there. I think she's more involved in this than she lets on to be. What if... Now, hold on. Hold on a second. What if... What if that's her? I'm gonna say it's the corpse. There's only one way the, uh, the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Yes? What is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I, I could never... It was the man in the prison garb. He is the one... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Mr. Falls had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car! He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting in a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. Oh, I, I, I see! Thank you for telling us about all the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we never would have uncovered the truth. That it couldn't have been Mr. Fowles that put the body in the trunk. No! Preposterous! To even suggest the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The corpse could only have been put in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know at the time she was taking photographs. It's got a timer. Now's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing! On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Take Let's take another look at this camera and see what features it has, shall we? It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Mmm! Why, it's almost as if she had brought this camera just to take this picture. Objection! What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she had claimed? Well, if she really did use the camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly. She was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defense please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? An answer in that question will also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Oh my god! She was right here! Naturally, the witness was right here. But, but that's... that's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing! Miss Faye, 
What on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk, it could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine! Of course Mr. Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. Omaewa. Oh the person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I'd never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. Then who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster! Uh, uh, me? Let's remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. Mr. Falls himself believed the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped to get him convicted. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, Mr. Falls had forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like because it, the fucking she needed the fucking the white fucking thing on it. The white scarf. Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification, namely this muddy scarf. It was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear this scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well? What do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? No! She disappeared. Did she collapse? Did she faint? Did she faint? Classic, classic bitch move. Uh, uh, where's, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. But why? She set up the camera to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the real culprit. Huh. Well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in recess. Time to play some dodgeball, boys. The defense and the prosecution are both to wait in their respective lobbies. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. All right, who's playing kickball? Let's pick teams. Let's pick teams. I want... Um, I will take... Artist. Artist, you first. Birdo, you're the other, you're the other team captain. Who are you picking? Dylan, you can't pick me. I'm a leader. I'm, 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 I'm the other. I'm the other team captain. You can't pick me. I'm, pi I'm, I'm first picking artist though. He's mine. I thought you meant artist was the other captain. No, no, I'm the captain. I'm the captain now. I'll take Georgie. Guess I'm taking Rico. This is gonna be an epic kickball tournament. Hmm. I'll take Ada. Okay. Um. Then I'll take uh heroes. Well, 
but will he throw them at his dilly? <laughs> what? <laughs> Let get this music started. I gotta... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry! write down little reminders to myself over I, I write bullet points gotta go with jorky i'm taking all your mains yeah see the thing is they suck at kickball so good luck i hope this stuff is still relevant So really, it's just you and Aris. And Heroes will spend the entire game arguing semantic rules with the refs. That's... And no, it's perfect. It's perfect. That's why That's why I have Heroes. We automatically win due, on, due to time. All we have to do is get one point over your team, and then we win due to timeout. Okay. I think I got most of my bullet points. I missed your Rico part, but that he won't show up. No, he's on my team, so he will show up. If he was on your team, he wouldn't show up. He'd be a dead body to you. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. A obstacle? Yeah, motif. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Rico bails on literally everyone? That's so false. He's never bailed on me. I don't think I've ever had him bail on me. Kill that policewoman anyway. Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnap and murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day five years ago, I dream of it every day. This picture reminds me of everything. The bridge looks the same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha! Huh. Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It true. I did. It true. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped... My girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Your, your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? What a fucking stupid move. The girl. Let her go. A simpler time. Shut up! C come closer and I I'll kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. His girl that's his girlfriend? He's a fucking he's a big man! That's a 12-year-old! We're protecting a pedophile? Shut the fuck up! Are we really protecting a pedophile? I don't care if he's innocent! 
He needs to die! At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong! No protect sister! Valerie betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything! All lies! All make-believe kidnapping too! A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel! Dude, this guy is 100% a fucking pet. How old is he? He's 25! Oh my god! And that means he was... He was 20? And the kid was 14? Was she 14? Was that confirmed? Is that just a number I pulled out? Wait, is this her? Dude, she looked like a little kid! In that picture, she looked like an absolute child. She looked like she was 10. Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I'd do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Hold on a minute. Wait. Is she Dahlia? If it was five years ago and she's Dahlia, she would have been 14. Oh my god, this dude's a fucking pedophile. Why are we protect- I don't want to do this case anymore. I've lost all motivation to do this case. Yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich, jewelry business. We get one jewel, that's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note, we send to her dad. Ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer cause she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket's a useful thing, all right? In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? The whole of mice and men thing too? Do you remember 3-1? No, I don't. It's been a while. What was, what was 3-1? What the fuck is wrong with this game, dude? It's wild. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways. Yeah, but that woman! That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real. Me and Alia. Bang. I was shot in arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. Takes place six months later. Phoenix gets framed for murder by his sweet girlfriend. Oh, okay, I remember that. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That man, Terry Falls. He killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. Her name wasn't Melissa then? Was it Dahlia? Is that where I remember her, the name Dahlia? Or was it just another fake name? These five years. All I wonder is why, 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 why? Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her, just ask why. Berto, it's not a spoiler, we just did it. Like, that was the last case. It's just, it was, it was a while ago, so I forgot. I remembered her name as soon as I saw Dahlia as a name. I knew it. Why? Why'd you lie? Why'd you betray me? Uh... I just want to hear the answer come from her mouth, that's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Huh? Where's what? 
Come on now, kitten. A ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now. Did you give it back to Pops? Please take it. I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day, on that bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. As soon as you saw Dahlia as a name, you thought it was Mia's mother? No, I... Th yeah, I thought it was Mia's mother, but I knew it was a name that I saw in the game. And I wasn't wrong about that. That's what I'm saying. You can come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said, with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. This is the true Black Dahlia murder. They never found her. Swallowed by river. Gone, Dahlia. My teen angel. Please stop fucking saying that, dude. I want to kill you. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? I- I can't defend this man. I would- I would- I would- I would recuse myself in me. I'd be done. I'd be done right here. I'd, I'd be out. I'd be out. For 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. It's a much more serious accusation than this, Mia. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears in the river with a rock worth two mil. Man, oh man. Angels these days. He's a 25-year-old man still calling her a teen angel. If, like, the teen angel was his thing he said when he was, like, 20 or whatever, still weird, but it's more weird that he's gotten older and he still refers to a 14-year-old as, like, his teen angel. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row, where he belongs. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really, uh... Okay, well, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say a simple term, and if it offends any of you, you can leave, but, um... Kill pedophiles. That's it. It's simple. Kill them. We don't need them. They're not helping us. Kill all pedophiles. It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. A $2 million gem used as ransom medallia lost to Eagle River five years ago. The train and wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron's hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. February 16th, 1.49 p.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Ugh. Ugh. God, that leaves such a bad taste in my mouth. Why did they choose... Why did they choose those ages for that? Come on, man. Like, this guy's an actual criminal. We should not be getting him off on anything. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. This bitch killed her sister. Hmm. You're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to... Wait, so, hold on. Artist, does this happen after or before the Phoenix thing? This... It would have to have been before, because she gets convicted for the Phoenix thing. That means she gets away with this. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed the violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? It's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yes, of course. I think it's the diamond. Huh. You're still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten? Mr. Armando? Listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. 
Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit gritting at me like that. There's, there's enough pedophiles in this fucking courtroom. But she's 20, so she's of age. Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Well, actually... I was about to say, I kept... I, I think... I was thinking she's 14 now, and I was like, the judge was kind of into her, too. Still, this, this is a fucking... This is a Leonardo DiCaprio age gap here. Of course. Mr. Judge is ready any time you like. I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why. I I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see you're such an honest, upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. What? Just when things are darkest for her, click. She lights right up. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. I was out of the country until last year, the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never, ever been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant's a horrible, horrible monster. I hate her. Mm. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You're a lot prettier when you smile. Somehow I have to I have to tie her to this case. I mean it's gotta be the diamond, right? Got I was out of the country until a year before last. Until I entered college, I'd never been into Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have a reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think that Finnett is a horrible, horrible monster. So what country were you living in then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed. It was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. Where the fuck was she? What? Where did she vacation to that she, her parents were killed in a civil war in the current century? Where, what kind of, where, where was she? Did they have water? Did they have running water? I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Nah. There's nothing I can do about her claim to have lost all her identification. All I can do is wait to find some other evidence about her real identity. Very well then, Miss Foster, please proceed. Telling her college and never been to Eagle Mountain before. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know? That's always that's always a red flag for me. Uh any person that I if I ever meet a person and they're like, oh I love camping, being outside, picnics and hiking. Well we can't be friends, so there's that. <laughs> you don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there unless they're running them on you. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. I love having trains run on me! Most money I make all week! I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. <laughs> Damn, Mia's getting feisty! By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution objects to any question that involved the witness's private life. All that matters is that she's a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to any questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you! She's really gone too far! Hmm, Miss Faye, you're treading on thin ice here. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Tits. 
Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches in the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Objection! Unfortunately, Miss Fay, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that, at that time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ha! That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. But that's not fair. That wicked inmate, I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such a deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. He forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Fowles is kind of forgetful. First one. She said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fowl's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. On top of that, he's a fucking pedophile. I mean, how can we make it worse? Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? I'm gonna add it. Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like to add it to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why I... Enough, witness. If you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. This is important. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Interesting choice of words, bitch. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone's wearing scarves. Maybe? I mean, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. That would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha! Looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando. Keep looking around you and you're gonna lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you gotta know when to not talk. Hold on a second. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. I feel like this is important. Cause how would she know? I mean, I know we just talked about it, but how would she know about the, the, the note? Like, the note specifically said, a white scarf. But the scarf was blue. <laughs> You've fallen into my trap, bitch. This scarf is blue, you slut. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, oh, you're talking about this scarf right Jorky's here, eh? Right. And look, there's a lot of things. Jorky's a lot of things. And fucking right as hell is one of them. That's right, Jorky. Blue scarf, scarf slut. Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. 
Wh white This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh! Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. I'm not surprised that mis she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought this scarf was white is... Because she read the fucking note, baby! Dude, this note's coming in clutch. Witness, have you ever seen this note? N note I... Uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason you would have... Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Oh! Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Well, Miss Foster? No. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that were that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yup. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name. There's her name right there. What's this? Who is this person, this Dahlia Hawthorne? Huh. Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne is the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? He's a parrot. He's turned into a parrot. You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she died five years ago, when she fell off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Objection! Got her. Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Wh what? Ha! Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I, I understand. A new arsonist? I can expose her true nature. I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edwards squirm. 
witness. Just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think it'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes, I understand. W what? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the, m the matter this far. You don't... you don't mean... Yes. The prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha! Ah, looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Bitch extraordinaire. Gold digger supreme. But, but I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see. Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Oh, Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder? Objection. Really, Miss Faye, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. To free the pedophile. At any cost. How dare you! Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Mm. But even worse than that, five years later... Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious. Her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Fay, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would the witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning. Somehow he's turned it around on me. It's like a turnabout turnabout. Ha. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kid. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. That wasn't me. It was this guy, this crazy coffee addict. Objection! I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha! What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? The rashness of youth, how charming. This coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? So I want to say... It's the diamond? Oh, it's, it's, it's the victim note. Because of what it says at the bottom. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. The whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Faye. If you like fiction, that is. 
Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was this secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dolly and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago. We believe it will explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Uh? Very well, I grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but you can enlighten us once more, my little Maple Leaf. Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia? But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Damn, even when she was 14, she was playing that shit? Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe, after all that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha! If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We've still got that info. That ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right. It was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister, Valerie, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life? Interesting. A new life. Like a new artist? I think it's all coming together now. I'm on to you, artist, in your dark secrets. You know, I gotta say, what a missed opportunity this was. Imagine if when I started streaming as Dylan with a blankie, I just always was like this. My face was always hidden by a blanket. That would have been a really good idea. So I could do a face reveal one day. But I fucked up. Now, it's too late now. There's way too many videos of me out there. Falls have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him? Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry, in the jewelry trade are quite wealthy, you see. 
quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of, uh, two million dollars. Two million dollars?! It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Mmm, yummy. Sounds delicious to me. Mmm! A two million dollar pint of milk! I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demanded that her sister Valerie make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I want to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth, why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on that mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kid never wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls was. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain, and... After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That was a dangerous thing to do, considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to run away, but Mr. Falls turned to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. Grin. It was a grin. A bloodthirsty grin. Ooh. And in the next instant... Dame Dane! I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly Taylor Swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shove from behind, that was it. Ah. Uh. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. Okay, hold on a second. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. I, I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't queer enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. I impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusty Bridge. Now, and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, 
you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. That's not why I picked it. <laughs> I picked it because there's like the the shit was really high. I don't see how the, it would have been easy for her to fall off. But whatever. Okay, game. I'll, I'll take that. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Ah! Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. You're right! The events occurred just as the witness had testified. Then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh? Yamate! Senpai! Desu des! She's gone into waifu mode! She's trying to protect herself! It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible Mr. Flo Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. If that's true, she, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now when I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order, order in the court. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Addiction! Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. But unlike Mr. Falls, it's not sexual assault. I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwitt he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous! What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Um. Uh. What was I doing? What was the logic? I don't remember what the logic was. What, what's the logic? What am I? What am I? What am I presenting against? I don't remember. <laughs> Look, you can just see my nose. It's just my big ass nose. Uh, uh, I, I really. I, I. I. I'm not really sure what the show here. Guest, I fucked up. This evidence shows the fatal error you've made. It's a fatal error, all right. Unfortunately, the error is yours, not mine. Uh oh, here it comes. Miss Faye, at this point in the trial, I can't just let that pass. I just guessed. I, I got, I got worried, and I guessed. something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Wait. Yeah, there's no way. Hold on. It's this. Yeah, there's no, there's no way you could accidentally fall off this bridge. That's what I was saying earlier. 
Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there! No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Ah! And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh! So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That's clearly impossible. Ah! Uh! It's finished edging. Order! What's the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Why was the tiger roar in there? Why did they throw the tiger roar? <laughs> Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to, s to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident you could handle the swift current, but even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. The same reason any woman would. For a diamond! Because diamonds are forever. I've seen the ads. I've seen the ads. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Oh! Oh, I'm finished. I, I've been edging for 20 years, and I finally come! This can't be! Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was gonna keep it for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnap. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Safely? You're in a raging river and you put that shit in your backpack? Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous! Objection! Y your Honor, five years ago the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. It's facts, dude. She's a fucking- she's an absolute demon. I agree. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Was it the pedophile? Her sister. Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? Objection! But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia. And then, she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that laughing at a time like this? 
Forgive me! It's just a hilarious! Witness? Is that you? Are you amusing me? One man! Miss me a free! She, I'm sorry, she turned into Michael Jackson. I don't know why. What am I? What am I? Wait, what? What am I doing? Did I? Did I? Oh, I pushed a button. I put my bad. My bad. I pushed a button. Hold on. Here, here we go. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? E evidence. Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. Then at fourteen. I blotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I, I... And one more thing. What happened to the two million dollar diamond? <coughs> if you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Hmm? Well, Miss Faye... I... I don't know. What a joke, you Miss Faye. Or stupid. prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago. I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicion. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are, motherfucker. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Ha! Without evidence, the trial's over? Who decided that? Hold up a second! Do we got a fan here? Who decided that? Who the hell decided that? I'm the one who decides! <laughs> He's a Seven Deadly Sins fan. M Mr. Armando? Come on now, kitten! Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. He had a body in the trunk of Mr. Fowl's stolen car, and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Y yes, that's that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? It's, uh, it's, it's the pedophile. The pedophile. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new pedophile. A new pedophile? Yes. Oh God, I'm sorry, artist. <laughs> the implication. I didn't mean. I didn't mean as as a. I didn't mean it like that. I was just. Sorry. I'm sorry, artist. <laughs> yes. We would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all, and that person is Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. It's the last chance for the last last chance. The last chance of last chances. This will be the most final last chance I've ever had in Ace Attorney. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. 
Mr. Falls? I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million doll hairs. That's not... not true. <laughs> Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia? Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never ever betray each other. Terry. Dahlia? It's true. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore. That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I, I believe in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But there's one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. <laughs> the, the, uh... I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. The final, final, last, before, final, final testimony. There will be no testimony after. This will be the final, final one. I promise you, nothing left. Just this one. This is it. The last one. Final, final. Nothing more. Ah! I'm sorry! I apologize! Jeez, calm down! Water! 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 Bleed water! What the fuck is happening? Can't talk. Need water? Ha! Huh. Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. Day 4 p.m. I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came and she stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was that was Valerie, not my Dahlia. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her? Do you think she would cover for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. The final, final, final trial, testimony, final file, of, of, of final files, of final finals, final trial finals, final, 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 final end final trials of final, final. FINAL FLASH! <laughs> well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Mr. Falls? With a bitch? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? How much longer is this chapter? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. Think. Stop the cars. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining. Already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? Yeah. Mr. Falls? Eagle Mountain. That spot. Strong, strong memories. Why did he just clam up? Could it be? He's hiding something here? You were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single goddamn question. To find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been the blink of an eye. I watched my car from the bridge. I never put no body in that car. You were watching the car? That bridge. Other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So I was watching Car. What else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction? 
I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Anyway, nobody came, no car, nothing. Okay, so he's full of, no, right, right there, he's full of shit. Yeah, he was, he was looking, he's looking away. He's looking away from where the car is. He's so full of shit. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge? You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well then, I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Uh? Uh? <laughs> oh, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. He turns into a fucking pterodactyl. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly queer. That's a pretty queer photograph I've ever seen one in my life. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge. That is not what I was going for. <laughs> okay. But, but that's the victim at the end of the bridge. I guess, I guess right again. <laughs> Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Uh, 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 blah? Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got there around four o'clock, it's true. I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to the special place before you went? He was going to Silent Hill, too. Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under the base of the tree there. Motherfucker. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle and a necklace is your memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your honor, your, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Ugh! With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. And no! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. <clears throat> huh? Mr. Falls? Yeah, what? That's enough. Please. Witness? I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink the bottle. Uh. No! Stop the trial! Your Honor! We need a recess! I was stupid. I couldn't keep promise. I did it. I drank this. No, we're so close. Just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. I'm a pedophile. The only way is to die. Maybe every pedophile should die. Mr. Falls! Death to every pedophile. They're unneeded. Thanks for the coffee. I mean, that's, I'm not that pressed about it. Later. He's still got that stupid fucking ball and chain. <laughs> and so, my first trial ended, suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. So she got away on a technicality because he killed himself. And then everyone just forgot who she was later. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul, I thought I'd never heal. I'm 
I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, a true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. Unforgivable, that bitch. Mr. Armando! We were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're gonna make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I, I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Did he just call her by her name? That's... That's basically how men uh, uh, show that they have respect for a woman. They call them they call them cat name or little little pet names all the time until they actually say their name. Like that's that's the trope. Like I was married to my wife for six years before I ever called her by her name. Uh, don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Oh God! The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. But Mr. Armando? No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter their memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later in this very same courthouse, I, myself, got wrapped up in that case. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Do we get to see it? Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Oh, that was it? Oh, shit! We did an episode in one session! Oh, my... Unheard of! A brand new episode has been added. Bridge to the Turnabout. Turnabout Anal Cavities. Whoa, that was fast! Whoa, that was fast! Oh. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll catch up with what you guys are saying. Witnesses just get to talk to each other, I guess. Finally, if you had the power of reset, you could be the best lawyer. Dude, if I if I could have an, an ability, if I had a stand or a quirk or an ability, it would be that I could save state. <laughs> but it would only be that I could save state, and I need someone at, like, Birdo would have the load state one. So we'd have to use our powers together for it to work. <laughs> we'd just be the staters. That would be that would be so fun, such a fun a fun ability to use. <laughs> and then birdo has got the load state, and I haven't saved state in a while, so Birdo accidentally hits load state, and we're back to when we're like fucking twenty five or something. And like, oh fuck, we gotta go through all that again. Uh, we knew. Uh, well, you got your wish. Yeah, dude, all pedophiles should die. So I mean, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad he did. That's the only way he could have ended. He could he couldn't got out for free. We knew Edgeworth and Mia had perfect records. Yeah, I knew that. I was, they had perfect records and she was free. So I didn't know Mia had a perfect record. I knew Edgeworth did. Because uh, he ruined it. Different judge, different prosecutor, and Dahlia did know it was you. So no one forgot. Hey, pussy, you feeling thirsty tonight? <laughs> he was from a seriously similar looking man in the future. Oh, shut up. The magnum opus, the case to end all cases. These are addicting, but also infuriating. It's true. There's so, some of them are really like, they feel real good when you finish. 
But, like, a lot of them really just fuck you up at the end. Classic Birdo. Alice wants to know if you want Frankenstein's house? Sure. It's a great mystery, but they definitely make up rules for narrative suspense more than to reflect actual law or common sense. Yeah, they definitely, they definitely kind of just make up their own. Okay. Um, I think, I think that's a good, good place to end for today. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop here. Do you think the writers made him a pedo because they knew they were going to kill him or did they kill him because he was a pedo? I don't know. I don't know, man. I like to think that they, they did it for that. Well, actually, isn't like, isn't the legal aid in Japan like 13 or something? So maybe. Max didn't die. Max. Huh? Max. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. You're right. You're right. Those pedophiles got to live. Ugh. All right. So that was fun. I I don't wanna I don't wanna get into like the beginning of episode five and stop. I wanna be able to like you know get to get get a good portion done. Legal age is thirteen on like a national level. No individual area of Japan has that one. Okay. Yeah. So he's a pedophile. He deserved to die. So uh, that, that was the perfect ending, honestly. Ending stream, L. Um, oh, Georgie, you dropped this. Oh, shit, you dropped two of them. That's crazy. Oh, my God. Can't believe you dropped these. You silly, silly man. Take them. Um, yeah, so I got to talk to Rico a little bit later today, and then I'll put out my schedule, and then I'm going to stream with Rico because Rico actually streams with me um, when I want to stream with him. It's crazy. It's weird. I know it, like, doesn't work for some people, but, like, I'm, I'm usually able to, like, be like, hey, Rico, you want to do a stream with me? And then he's like, yeah, and then we stream together. It's wild. Wild stuff. Wild stuff. It's, uh, it's crazy how it happens. I can't explain the process. Legality doesn't make it not pedophilia. Well, I mean, if they... I'm, I'm talking about, like, just for the guys who made the game. Like, if they made the game and it was, like, age legal, like, age appropriate, then it makes sense that, like, it didn't really matter to them. They just, like, threw it in there. They just threw random ages. But come on, man. <laughs> he was 20 years old with a 14-year-old. That's fucked up. Like how the U.S. doesn't have a legal age, but states have 16 or 18. I don't know. That's fucked up. But anywho, uh, I'm going to talk to Rico. We're going to figure out when, when the streams are going to be this week. So Tuesday. Tuesday is either going to be... Honestly, I'm probably going to play more of this. Tuesday is either going to be more Ace Attorney or it's going to be playing uh, the game with Rico. And I'm off Wednesday. So you know, just keep an eye out. No, no, guys. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming by. Thanks for thanks for being here. Thank you for being a friend. Japanese media don't gotta follow any rules. That's not true. That's not true. They got rules they gotta follow. Like they can't show pussy. They're not allowed to show vagina. They gotta censor it. They always gotta censor vagina, no matter what. And they gotta be weird. They always gotta censor vagina. So you're wrong. That's the rule they gotta follow. That's the only rule they have is that if a vagina's on screen, it's gotta be pixelated. That's the one rule in Japan. And sometimes the head of a penis. <laughs> well, yeah, I meant narratively for legal age of dating. Well, no, you said Japanese media don't gotta follow any rules, okay? That's the one rule of Japan. The, the flag, you know, the red circle is just, it, it's a pie chart that says how much pussy do we got to censor? All of it. All of it. No one can see that. I misspoke. I accept this. Thank you. Thank you. A new artist gracefully accepting defeat. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go. Thanks for, thanks for sticking around, guys. Uh, I'll let, uh, keep an eye on the Discord. Uh, you'll see what we're doing uh, tomorrow. Bye, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Everyone go to bed right now. I know it's, you know, not the end of the day, but everyone go to bed. Everyone stop what you're doing. Go to sleep. Get a blanket. Go to bed. Bye, guys.